Today is Annabelle's estimated earliest calving due date. And as you can see, no baby. She is looking mighty fine though. Hi, Annabelle. Will you go ahead and baby? Huh? Will you go ahead and baby? Now check your udders, mama. So she still has, she is definitely bagged up considerably. Look at her udders. She is definitely getting close, but I know she's not quite there because her teats, she's still got some room in her tweet teats. I still see some wrinkles, so she still has room to bag up even more. So she might be another week or two, but you gotta keep in mind also, she's older, she's nine years old this year. And older cows, they can bag up and calf in 24 hours and you won't even see it coming. So we're gonna try to keep an eye on her. Maybe we'll be here for it, maybe we won't. We won't know until it happens. So all we can do is just kind of keep an eye on her. And Mr. Brutus. Hi bud. My has chin scratches? I know, I don't have any food for you just yet. I'm sorry. Mr. Brutus here is uh, gonna be getting ready. To, oh, Axel, really? You gotta come in here and establish your dominance? We know you're the head honcho here. But Brutus will be going to uh, freezer camp here in the next couple weeks. And, but he is looking fabulous. Hey bud. Just showing the guys, showing the people over here, all of you. Hey buddy, just showing you off to everyone. You're a handsome man, you know that? You're a sweet boy, we're gonna miss you. We're gonna miss you a lot. If you don't know Brutus, his history with us, him and Axel were our first two cows we ever owned. They were, they're half brothers. We got them as bottle babies and raised them up. Axel became our herd sire and Brutus is, got steered out and he is gonna be our, our freezer beef. So we've given him a really good life. He's two and a half years old now and uh, we're just letting him finish off and we're gonna be sending him off to be processed. So you might be wondering what all that noise is in the background. I don't know if you can hear it or not, but if you can, the noise is this. That's our house pad. That's only half of the height. So I'm gonna get down on the level so you can kind of see. There's the trees, there's the pad. It's gonna ultimately be about five feet high. That is the height that we have to have, which that is not normal for a house pad. I guess it is in like further south in like the big cities where they have a lot of intense flooding. But for where we are in our country town, our small country town, that's, that's actually really, really high. Um, our property is just very low. So unfortunately we're getting stuck with having to set all this dirt. And then it doesn't help that our house is gonna be 3,100 square feet. That's, that's a big house pad, five feet high. Oof. Thank Thankfully we were able to dig a pond and use the dirt from that because it would have cost us a very pretty penny to bring in that much dirt. Like we're talking truckload of dirt, I think runs about $250. And one truckload of dirt only has 14 cubic feet, or four, I'm sorry, 14 cubic yards. We needed 2000 cubic yards of dirt for our pad. So doing the math, I think it came in between like 25 and $35,000 just for dirt. So thankfully we hired someone to come out, dig the pond, set the dirt. He's setting up the pad right now. And then we get to building. I'm actually working on permit applications right now, which is fun. So um, if you guys have any questions about permit applications, please let me know, uh, cause we're learning about it. But if there's anything that you guys are unsure of, for Florida, anywhere else I can't answer, but for Florida, I'd be more than happy to try and share some insight into the building process that we've been that we've learned thus far on another another note i thought i would share with you guys mocha's baby so we gave it a little extra time for people to get their votes in we got a few more votes and his name's been decided this will be the first time i've called him by his new name so let's see if he likes it hey Oh my, I think you might like it. Carmel, do you like your new name? Your name's Carmel, hi handsome. Oh, you feeling frisky? What do you think of your new name, sassy pants? 
Do you like the name Carmel? I think it suits you. Handsome man. So he is six weeks old now. So, oh, I'm gonna hold your horns, yeah. Don't headbutt me. He's, 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 he's in that playful phase and unfortunately he doesn't have any other baby goats to play with. But I think you're almost big enough to be able to run in with, so with Sophie and Waffle. And you can play with them. We uh, trimmed his feet for the first time the other day and he did excellent. Hi <laughs> baby. So him and Mocha are still hanging out here in the paddock. Um, working on fattening Mocha up now that she is no, she is kitted. And soon here in a couple weeks, we're gonna start weaning him off of her. And then at 10 weeks, we'll be castrating him so that he will be a weather. Um, unless his future home decides to keep him as a buck. I don't think that's gonna happen though because, oh, does that feel good? Oh, I got a scratch. <laughs> Did I find a scratch? Oh, yes, oh, yes. Oh, that feels good. But given that he is half Nigerian, half myotonic, I don't want to, um, I don't think he'd be good as a buck. We wanna keep, we wanna keep, we wanna do, <laughs> did you just hit your head on the tree branch? We wanna be responsible in breeding, so I don't think he's going to be a buck. I think we're gonna weather him out and he'll be a companion or a pet, and that'll be good. On another note, I got a lot of news for you guys. So I think I mentioned in a previous vlog, I think I gave it away that we were gonna be getting our fainting goats, our actual herd. So Mr. Saffron here in the background, Mocha's baby Carmel, and unfortunately Waffle are going to be going to new homes. Um, it was kind of a difficult decision with Waffle, but he has kind of turned into a bit of a bully for Sophie. I mean, he's not bad, but whenever food comes into play, he's always like trying to headbutt her. And even though we handled him as a baby, he doesn't like us handling him. He doesn't like us petting him. Whereas Sophie's amazing. So um, we are gonna be keeping Mocha and we are gonna be keeping Sophie. But the other three, Mocha's baby, Carmel, Saffron, and Waffle are gonna actually be going to new homes to make room for our new herd. We're gonna be getting two bucks, two, two, uh, two bucks, and then we're gonna be getting two does. And I'm really excited to share pictures of them. I'll actually, um, probably in the next vlog, we'll be sharing pictures of them. We are going to Georgia. We're gonna be making a road trip to Georgia for them, so we will be doing a vlog on that, but that's still a ways away because we want them to be on their moms um, until they are weaned because it's just, it's gonna be healthier for them. They're gonna develop a better gut and I'll feel better having them be with their moms until they're ready to wean. Orchard transition is going well. Um, I have some sad news, unfortunately. Uh, we had a freeze, a really intense freeze come through uh, a couple months ago and I was so worried about whether or not the animals were warm enough. I did not think about our fruit trees. And our peach tree, I think, died. It's, as you can see, whenever I cut, it was like this. Whenever I pruned it to check and see, um, yeah, I think we might have lost the peach tree. I'm letting it sit here for a little while longer and seeing if it puts out any new buds. I'm hoping it does, but it it's probably dead. But um, as you can see here, our mulberry, our mulberry, our fig trees are doing excellent. They're bouncing back beautifully. Oh, hi puppers! Hi. This is our uh, guy, this is the dog who belongs to the guy who's doing our house bed. Hi honey, you're so hey, cute. Champ. It's okay. Champ's the champ! Oh, is that his name, Champ? Mm-hmm. Hi, Champ. It's okay. Say that's so, but the fig trees are doing good. We actually started propagating. We've got our first five successful propagation, propagated fig trees. Then our variegated kumquat, which I'm really excited for because look, look at that. Look at all of these. You can see the little kumquat right there. We've got kumquats coming in all over. And I'm so excited because this will be the first time that this has bloomed. So I'm really excited to see how it tastes. Um, 
it's had plenty of time to establish, which I think is the reason why it's exploding right now because it's never fruited before. I think, I think it was just kind of establishing itself. Then our, one of our apple trees, we've trans, we transplanted one of the apple trees to see how it was and see, cause we've never transplanted an apple. We've never transplanted an apple tree before. So I wanted to make sure that we knew how to do it. This apple tree has come out of dormancy. As you can see, we've got some apples coming in. Yes, apples in Florida. It's amazing, isn't it? So we've got, these are coming in. So I'm kind of hesitant to move it, but we have to move it. So we're gonna try and dig as far out as possible to not disturb the roots as little as possible. Hopefully we can save it. And then um, the only other fruit tree to transplant is our Calamondin right here, which is kind of having its I did a heavy pruning on it to try and encourage it to grow up. So it's doing good, but banana trees are all moved. The apple tree and the ponderosa lemon are moved and they're in the new location. And I'll show you guys that here soon. It feels like I just mowed this area, but it's already needing to be mowed again, which is good. We've been having a lot of rain. Actually for the last two days, we've been getting a lot of rain. So that should be exploding. Among our other fruit trees though, I thought you guys might like to see, um, we had our first heifer that was born on the property. Her name was Lexi. There was a freak accident and we lost her, unfortunately. And we planted a mango tree to commemorate her. And it's doing good. It's got all these, all those funky colored leaves. That's new growth coming in. So it's doing good. We figured that would be a really nice shade tree to have out in the middle of pastures. You can see all around me, there's, there's no shade out here. So we want to try and plant fruit trees that grow really, really tall to provide good shade for uh, the herd while they're out grazing. The banana trees are settling in nicely. Almost every single one has a new leaf coming up the center, which is excellent. So I think the uh, transplanting of the banana trees was a success. I don't think we've lost any. I think every single one of them made it, which is excellent. And then coming through here is the future orchard and as you can see right there is the ponderosa oh, sorry right there is the ponderosa lemon and then there's the apple so the ponderosa lemon it's actually handled the transplant nicely I mean it's a citrus citrus tend to be easier to transplant the leaves are already turning more green than they were they were very yellow and I think they were just stressed out there was a lot of water where they were so the leaves are starting to turn more green now, thankfully. The apple tree, we'll see if it survives. It might, it might not. We do have some dead leaves, of course, transplant shock. But some of the leaves are still pretty good. This leaf right here, this, these, are, these are still green. So maybe, maybe it'll survive, it might not. If not, then we're gonna have to replace the apple trees, but at least we know what varieties will grow down here so we can get some more. And now we know where they're gonna go permanently, so we'll just go from there.